Welcome. Let's look at the cerebral cortex. This is our study guide. And hopefully by the end of this class, we should be able to describe what the cerebral cortex is, the functions of the cerebral cortex, the structure in terms of growth and a bit of histology, the regions and the lobes of the cerebral cortex, functional areas, and the clinical and applied anatomy. The cerebral cortex is a gray matter outer layer of the cerebral hemisphere. This is the cerebral hemisphere, and the outer gray layer is termed the cerebral cortex. This is the outer layer, and deep to the cerebral cortex, we have the cerebral medulla. The medulla is whitish in color, while the cerebral cortex is grayish in color. The outer region is termed the cerebral cortex, and that is what our lecture will be focusing on. The inner deeper layer, which is termed the cerebral medulla, will be looked into in our subsequent lecture. So the cerebral cortex is about two to four mm in thickness, and it covers about two meters square. Cerebral cortex in human is more diverse than what we see in other mammals, and this is what distincts us Going through this lecture, we would be able to see the different functional areas that the cerebral cortex presents that make human to be distinct from other mammals. The functions of the cerebral cortex. It presents a number of functions which include memory, consciousness, as the hand is moving, as the neck is moving, we are aware of all this, and that is proprioception. Also thought, we are able to reason, language, Movements, different kind of movements are controlled by the activities of the brain, which is specifically within the cerebral cortex. Also taste perception. This is a region of the cerebral cortex that allows the perception of taste and also auditory function. We are able to hear what people say through the activities that are taken up in the cerebral cortex. Also vision, we are able to see also for smell, which is olfactory function and some other functions that we also see during the course of this lecture. This will take us to the structure of the cortex in terms of gross and morphology. How are they able to execute this listed function? Let's look at the gross presentation. The cerebral cortex is not a plain pattern presentation. They are seen with depression and elevation. We have the gyra. The gyra elevations that are seen across the entire surface of the cerebral cortex. So after the elevation, we have a depression that is termed the sole cause. So this is the sole cause, the depression that is seen. Why are they not just seen in a plain pattern configuration? They are basically to increase the surface area of the cerebral cortex. So it tends to increase the surface area for the activities of the cerebral cortex so that more space will be created for the deposition of neural network to execute specific function. Then also is in a way to protect the cerebral cortex because we have regions that are embedded within the cerebral cortex. Of course, two third of the entire cerebral cortex are embedded within. So two third of the cerebral cortex form the sulci. Why one third form the gyra. Some of the regions of the cerebral cortex are embedded within as a way of providing protective covering or structural guide to the cerebral cortex. In terms of histology, what is the general component of the cerebral cortex? The cerebral cortex is made up of neural cell body. The cell body are the major structural components that we see in the cerebral cortex. And of course, we have the dendrites that are attached to them. Then another structure that is seen are all myelinated axon. We already know that axon are long extension from the body, and they are also being padded by myelin sheets that is formed by the swan cell. The region where this swan cell runs through to form myelin sheet tends to present a whitish coloration, but this region is not seen within the cerebral cortex. And that is why you see that the cerebral cortex is grayish in color, it is not whitish as seen in the medulla region of the cerebral hemisphere. So you see whitish presentation here because nine fibers or axon that are wrapped by myelin sheets are mostly embedded in this region. Why the cell body is what you see in the outer margin. 
which is the cerebral cortex. And that is why it is seen to be grayish in color. Another structure that you see within the cerebral cortex is the neuroglia cell. And the most abundant that you see in this region are the astrocytes. Also, you see capillary beds. Of course, the neurons will need to be supplied with blood. These are the general structures that we see within the cerebral cortex. I haven't talked about the general component of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is a layered structure. So it, it is made up of six layers. And these layers are embedded with specialized type of cells, which are programmed to exhibit different function. So we have the molecular layer, we have the external granular layer, the external pyramidal layer, the internal granular layer, the internal pyramidal layer, and the multiform layer. So these are the six layers that the cerebral cortex is made up of. We are going to look into this in a separate lecture video. So watch out for this. There is a form of cytological variation within the layers. The layers are not uniform across the entire circumference of the cerebral cortex. They vary in terms of thickness. And this is because the different regions of the cerebral cortex are programmed for specific function. So the quantity or amount of cell deposited within them depends on the functions that they are to exhibit. So the entire thickness of the different layers are not uniform across the entire circumference of the cerebral cortex because different regions are programmed for different functions. This will take us to the loops of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is divided into four loops. We have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. So we have four lobes of the cerebral cortex. In understanding the different functional areas that we have within the cerebral cortex, it is good for us to first divide the cerebral cortex into the lobes that they are made up of. The lobes are formed as a result of the sulci. So we have three basic sulci, which are major sulci that helps to divide the cerebral cortex into the loops that we highlighted in our previous slide. It is good for us to also know that this is a lateral side of the cerebral hemisphere. So we are just looking at the cerebral cortex on one side. So we have three sulci. The first one is the central sulcus, and this is the central sulcus. The central sulcus divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So this is the frontal lobe, this is the parietal lobe. Then the second one is the lateral sulcus. And this is the lateral sulcus. The lateral sulcus separates the parietal lobe from the temporal lobe. Then we have the last one, the parietal sulcus. And this is the parietal sulcus. And it separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. So now going deep to look at the functional areas of each of the regions that we have listed. So looking at the functional areas of the cerebral cortex, it's good to highlight the fact that the functional areas are specific areas that are designed for specific function. So around the cerebral cortex, we have different regions that are programmed for specific function. To summarize the functional areas, we have three major functional areas. We have the sensory areas, we have the motor area, and we have the association area. So this is the pattern by which we will be highlighting the functional areas of the different region of the cerebral cortex. Well, we already know that we have cerebral cortex on the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe. So now we would be taking each of the lobes one after the other to map out the different region within each lobe where the functional areas are located and also the functions that they exhibit. So let's look at the frontal lobe first. On the frontal lobe, we already said that the frontal lobe is separated from the parietal lobe by the central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus highlighted in green color. So the region located anterior to it is the frontal lobe. So the first functional area we we'll talk about is the primary motor cortex. This is the primary motor cortex. And what this does is to control motor activity. We are able to move our hand, we are able to rotate our head. Any voluntary control of muscle that we exhibit is being controlled in the primary motor cortex. So this is the region of the brain that controls those activity, and it is located anterior to the central sulcus. This can also be referred to as the precentral gyrus because we say after a depression, we have an elevation. And this is a major depression. This is the central sulcus. And after this, we have an elevation after it. And this elevation is called the gyrus. And because it's precentral, a gyrus that is situated before 
the central sulcus, we call it the precentral gyrus. So this primary motor cortex can also be referred to as the precentral gyrus. So it is located just immediately anterior to the central sulcus. Then furthermore, we have motor association area. The motor association area are located anterior to the primary motor cortex. And these are the regions carved out in red and we have two major sub-regions that make up this motor association area. The first one is the supplementary motor cortex. And this is the supplementary motor cortex. And more inferior to it, we have the premotor cortex. And this is the premotor cortex. So anterior to the primary motor cortex, we have the motor association area. What this does is they help to plan the execution of motor action. They help to plan the initiation of this motor action. They also help to plan sequential and complex movements. So more on the frontal lobe, we also have additional regions that we would want to highlight. And the first one is the frontal eyelid. So anterior to the motor association area, we have the frontal eyelid, and this is the frontal eyelid. And what this does is to control high movement. Then the next region more inferior to it and a more wider region is the prefrontal association cortex. And what this does is to help in memory, in learning, and also reasoning and behavioral execution. This is the prefrontal association area. More inferior, we have the Broca's area. The Broca's area is responsible for speech production. And this is the Broca's area. So this is the entire functional distribution of the frontal loop of the cerebral cortex. So going to the parietal loop. So the first one is the primary somatosensory cortex. And this is the primary somatosensory cortex. This is located just behind the central sulcus, just as we have in the primary motor cortex. This can also be referred to as the postcentral gyrus because we say after a depression, we would have an elevation because this elevation is a gyrus and is a gyrus that is located posterior to the central sulcus. It is called the postcentral gyrus. So the primary somatosensory cortex can also be referred to as the postcentral gyrus. And what this does is the perception of sensory stimuli. We have sensation of touch, sense of temperature, sense of proprioception, awareness of movement of limbs and so on are being integrated and perceived in this region of the brain. Then the second one is somatosensory association area. You can see that this is following a trend. When you have the motor area, we have the motor association area, which helps in analysis. Then also in the parietal loop, where we have the somatosensory cortex, the next region that we see posterior to it is the somatosensory association area. Basically to analyze the sensory impulses that are being generated on the somatosensory cortex. And this is the somatosensory association area. And the next one is the posterior association area. And this is located behind the somatosensory association area. And this region presents a form of multiple sensory exhibition. It tends to link auditory and visual inputs and they are being integrated in this region. So this is the posterior association area. Then we have the temporal lobe. For the temporal lobe, we have the primary auditory cortex. The primary auditory cortex, we already know that this is the lateral sulcus that separates the parietal lobe from the temporal lobe. Just inferior to the lateral sulcus is where we have the primary auditory cortex. And this primary auditory cortex is responsible for the perception of sound, the tone, the frequency, and also the location of the sound that is being perceived. And this is the primary auditory cortex. Then around it, we have the auditory association area. You can see this trend. When you have a sensory cortex, the next region that is close to it will now be the association area. So we have around the primary auditory cortex, we have the auditory association area. And this is the auditory association area that helps to analyze the auditory inputs that is being perceived by the primary auditory cortex. The next one is the waning case area. The waning case area is located behind the primary auditory cortex and the auditory association area. You can see it around this region. It, it is harrowed yellow, highlighted in green, but a bit of it has turned to the parietal loop. It is responsible for the comprehension and understanding of language.
Then the next one, we've said that this region of the brain is on the lateral side. So if we go a bit deep or medial to the primary auditory cortex, this region is located deep, not as it is shown on this image. It is same medial to the auditory cortex, and this is the olfactory cortex. And of course, around the olfactory cortex, we also have the olfactory association area, and this is the olfactory association area. The functional area of the cerebral cortex on the hospital lobe, and the first one we have is the primary visual cortex, and this is the primary visual cortex. It is located at the pole of the occipital lobe, and what it perceives are uh, visual stimuli. Then around it, we also have association area. This is the association area that helps to analyze the visual perception. We also have the insula. The insula can only be seen when the lateral sulcus have pulled apart so as to open up the region of the insula. The insula can also be presented in this region. This is the lateral sulcus. So deep to it is where we have the insula. It's a functional area that is also programmed to exhibit specific function. And one of the function that they present is the perception of taste. And the anterior region of the insula is designed for this function. And this can specifically be termed the gyratory cortex. Then the other function that they present is visceral sensation. The sensation from the smooth muscle organs can be felt in this region of the cerebral cortex and also the sense of movement and balancing, the applied and clinical anatomy, cerebral dominance. There is a functional inequality presented within the cerebral cortex. We've said that the cerebral cortex overlies the two cerebral hemispheres because of the differences in the deposits of the neural network that is seen within the cerebral cortex there may be a form of dominance of one cerebral hemisphere over the other. Then we may have lesions of the cerebral cortex. We've said that the cerebral cortex are seen with different functional areas as we have highlighted. And if there are lesions within the cerebral cortex, of course, it will affect the functions of the regions where the lesion occur. For example, the motor cortex, let's say there's a lesion in the motor cortex, any injury within the motor cortex, we should know that we affect the activities of the voluntary motor action. Also lesion in the frontal eyelid. We already said that the frontal eyelid control high movements. And this, of course, will lead to the impairment of that function. This is our brain task. And the first one states that the cerebral cortex is generally made up of dash. We can fill in this space. I haven't discussed about the general structural component of the cerebral cortex. Then the second question is to describe how the cerebral cortex is seen in terms of gross presentation. When you see it with the naked eye, what do you see? How do you see it being configured? Then the third question is to list and state the functions of the different functional areas of the cerebral cortex. So thanks for watching.